Uh, so I'm a power systems engineer, so uh, it's first disclaimer I must I must do because I don't work on software engineering or even high performance compu computing, but uh, on the power systems you have a lot of problems that actually matters for the high performance computing community. Um, I will try to address several problems, I hope I have time, but just to give you some trend on the ener energy sector, we are <coughs> seeing now the third revolution in energy sector. First one was renewable energy, it started in Denmark like 30 years ago, uh, smart grids, and now it's a digitalization of the, the energy sector. So this means using data, this means using high performance computing uh, to create value from the smart grid infrastructure that is already available in several countries. Um, <coughs> so in terms of renewable energy, before there was feed-in tariffs, large renewable power plants, now we have self-consumption, so every residential consumer can produce its own energy and consume it, and participation of renewables in the market. And this changes completely the, the picture in terms of renewable energy, so this makes more relevant the use of data, for example, and extract, extracting value from data. System operation, so they were very reactive, so they were just acting when they had a problem, and the, num the number of sensors and control capabilities, so monitoring control, was quite low. Um, now they are planning their operations, so it's a shift on the paradigm of managing the grid. There is new monitoring devices that produce a lot of data. I will show you one example later. And you can control some devices in the network. So this is then the electricity market. Uh, there was no renewables. There were large players. Now what we have is renewables new players uh, in the market and the European market. So the market, the tendency, uh, and this is a derivative of the uh, directive of the uh, European Commission, is to have an European market. So this means a common market all over Europe. So this means a, a challenge also in, in terms of managing that market. Energy analytics, so this is the, the hot topic now in the energy industry. Before there was a lack of business cases for data mining, they were buying external services from other companies. Now they are hiring data scientists, so they have in-house data scientists, and there is several data-driven problems. So you can actually uh, optimize your operational costs uh, using uh, um, data mining algorithms, for example, and they are realizing this. Um, R&D, um, we used to have projects uh, at the TRL below five, prototype level. I mean, I'm from the research institution, so this was uh, 10 years ago, this was our, our project. Now uh, the European Commission is pushing for the deployment of the technology, so higher TRL levels. In my opinion, this is a stagnation of R&D because the national funding bodies are also pushing for higher TRLs, and this is a problem. So we are no longer producing knowledge in basic research, and this might be a, a problem. Um, and finally, in terms of IT solutions, so data was being stored and used offline. In some cases, it was not being used at all. And uh, now there is online large volumes of data, so and there is a, some value on that, on that data. So I divided what could be the use cases for high performance computing into two categories. I will not go point by point, I don't have time. Um, energy analytics, so means that extracting value from, f value from the data, so asset management, awareness of the operators, awareness of the consumers, for example, how much you consume, uh, state estimation, forecasting, weather intelligence, and so on, and energy optimization. So this is more on optimizing some system. It could be a, a house, it could be an electrical grid, it could be anything. Uh, stochastic optimization, this is where there is a lot of challenges in terms of computational performance, aggregation of resources, demand response and energy optimization. I'll try to give some examples uh, in, the, in the next slides. But I, I would start by something that it's uh, really puzzling is uh, we heard a lot of big data, but in the energy sector uh, we should not talk about big data. There is no big data there. So. Uh, what we should talk is either fast data, actional data, relevant data, smart data, not big data, because most of the data is not very useful. It's big, but it's not useful. Um, so this is my personal opinion. I think the real challenges are these five challenges. So first, we need to have data quality, acceptable data quality. 
if we ask for data to uh, electrical utility, the number of the percentage of missing values is higher than 60%. So you cannot use that data, so the problem is you cannot solve it. Um, then you need to filter what is relevant and irrelevant data. Most of the data is irrelevant. They are collecting it, but they are not using it. They will not never use it. It's irrelevant. Um, fast access to data, that's the main problem, in fact. So uh, you have data storage, uh, storage. You need to grab that data in a minimum amount of time. And in some cases, it takes hours to grab that data. ICT is also a problem. Not all the technologies provide real-time data. <coughs> there is also a lack of business cases for data. So how much I gain in investing a PLC prime or a GPRS communication system to get data in real time? How much I, I save in terms of money? And this is lacking. There is no, no direction. So that's why the investment in ICT is also not so, so high in the energy sector. And then include domain knowledge. I will talk more about this. But they are hiring data scientists, but the knowledge, the expert knowledge, is, is not being renewed. So at some point, they will lose that. And this is essential. So uh, we need to have people able to extract uh, values from data, but we need also expert knowledge or domain knowledge from the problem. So this is my personal opinion. I think these are the, the five problems we need to address before going to talk about big data or, or, or something similar to that. Um, so this is also my personal opinion. There is too many platforms, frameworks, and libraries to handle data and, and to distribute the, the process. So Adobe, Spark, and so on. The same with the machine learning, several ones. Um, so what the, the, the energy sector is, is doing, they are testing these platforms. They are exploring these libraries. They are investing high performance computing in IT. And that's all. Um, what they are not doing is that they are combining classical processes. They are have experience for uh, uh, 50 year, years of experience on that, domain knowledge, and what it comes out of these advanced algorithms. They should merge uh, this, this, this knowledge and not invest in one of these of this knowledge. Um, they are not testing new concepts like uh, distributed control, stochastic optimization. So they are m much attached to what is already available in the, in the market and they are not investing in, in new knowledge for data analytics. So they are using what is available in the libraries. Some are commercial libraries, others are open, open source libraries. But it's, it's starting to become um, difficult to, to generate new knowledge with the industry support and that's, that's one, one problem. So what I will try to give you some examples of some of the work we have done at INESC. Um, uh, the first work is uh, in the morning. It was already discussed the, the forecasting. Um, so what we wanted to do at INESC, it was to improve the wind power forecasting or the renewable energy forecasting. So imagine that you have a wind farm and you have a grid of spatial points. And this grid can, for example, in our case study, uh, it was 169 points, so each point has several weather variables, wind speed and so on, and we want to extract knowledge from that grid using domain knowledge. So this is a huge uh, problem to give you an idea. Uh, for the, for the one, one wind farm, uh, f we have 2,700 variables. For a PV site, 1,000 variables. And this is for a single site. So um, and what we want to do is, what we do, we use domain knowledge, so we construct features from the original data, um, and then we apply a statistical learning uh, algorithm. The ideal situation would be to do this automatically, for example, using deep learning. So what I get in the end is I get a big improvement uh, in terms of forecast error, so there is some value. But the question is, the challenge is scalability. So uh, I have all these variables for one site, and if I have hundreds and thousands of sites, so I will need uh, high performance computing. So how I scale this up to a national level, for example. So in Portugal, this is challenging. We are a small country, so in Spain, it is even more challenging. Um, and so this is uh, an interesting point, is how we extract value from the, from the data. Um, to improve it, uh, but we need to guarantee scalability because 
Uh, for example, in our case, we are a research institution, but we work with the industry. And what we deliver in the end is a TRL close to nine. So for us, scalability is a concern. So we need to address this uh, as well. Um, <coughs> another problem that we also published this year was collaborative forecasting. So I will also be a little bit provocative. So at some point, I will show you there is some alternatives to high performance computing, which could, could be local computation units. Um, and this is, goes in this, this direction. So imagine I have multiple wind farms. I want to forecast the future values of these three wind farms, for example. I want to use all the measurements from the tree and put them in the same basket. Uh, so it's a vector autoregressive framework to forecast the future values using all the data from these wind farms. So if I have uh, 1,000 wind farms, uh, this will be a very, very large problem. Um, and I need to estimate the matrix of, of coefficients. So what we have done was first to do variable selection with the lasso model, and then to explore um, a technique that is more or less recent, alternating direction method of multipliers to decompose the problem and apply distributed learning. So you can use um, distributed learning to decompose a uh, regression problem. In our case, it's a multivariate, a multi-output regression problem. And you can break the problem into sub-problems. You can separate the, um, the sub-problems. And then you can solve by core or, or anything. So you can actually apply these to a cluster. So this is perfect for high-performance computing. Um, but to be provocative, I would say that, okay, but why not using fog computing uh, is a buzzword, but why not doing this local? So I have several wind farms, several houses, residential houses. Um, I could do this, I can decompose the, the problem and solve it locally. There is two major advantages. One is collaborative forecasting, so everyone collaborates. But the most important one, you maintain data privacy. All the models and data are local. They are not exchanged with everyone. And data privacy is an issue. Um, now with the new uh, directive for data protection, this will be even more, more critical. Um, and this could be, let's say, an alternative. Well, instead of solving this in a large cluster of computers, we can do it uh, locally. Um, Okay, so continuing in energy analytics, um, this is a, a, an interesting problem and it's being deployed in several countries, uh, is the use of phaser measurement units. So to explain this very quickly, the main advantage to the other measurement devices is that they also measure the phase of a voltage, for example, not only the magnitude. So you have the complex number fully uh, measured, so the phase and the, and the magnitude. But and they produce high update rate data, so you can actually get data with less than one second of time resolution. So this is being deployed in several countries. In Texas, this is a pilot in Texas. Uh, they install the 15 uh, phase measurement units in the Texas electrical grid. Uh, these 15, they generate one gigabyte of data per day. Not all the data is useful, but they generate all these, these data. You have here these numbers. We are installing in the Iberia Peninsula, in Portugal and Spain, six uh, phase measurement units in the national uh, project. And there is several use cases, mainly related with deep learning, so how to extract knowledge from the grid, uh, but to give more awareness to an operator, uh, to classify some of the events, because with this data, it's impossible for a human operator to analyze the events. He needs some help, uh, again, with the domain knowledge to do this and also to forecast the state of the network for, for the next hour. So the problem here is you need to handle a lot of data, but you also need to have some very efficient algorithms because they need to run in real time. So again, the time of running an algorithm is, is very critical if we want to go to a commercial solution. OK, so I, I will move now to energy uh, optimization. So I, I will try to give an overview of, of the problems. Uh, probably not all of you are familiar with this nomenclature. Don't feel free to interrupt me. Um, there is uh, something that it's a power flow. Power flow means uh, estimating some variables, uh, the flow of power in the in electrical network. 
you can feed this algorithm with some input variables and you get output variables which are state variables of the, of the network. So this is the traditional. It's what you find in the, in the system operators. An evolution is to have uncertainty on this. So we have renewable <coughs> energy, we have uncertainty, we are not sure of how much wind generation we'll have in the next hours. So this means that you have scenarios, you run multiple power flows, so multiple algorithms, and you get a probability distribution in the end. So, and this is, again, you can use high performance computing to parallelize all these uh, power flows. This is um, interesting, it gives some awareness. But more interesting would be to optimize this power flow. So this means running here a, an optimization problem, which is a non-convex, a non-linear optimization problem. Again, you take some forecast as an input, and you get decision variables, so control set points, and you get the state or the output variables according to those control algorithms. This is, um, let's say, it's what the industry does not have now, they are working on this right now. It's operational planning, it's planning the operations. Some of the DSOs and TSOs, so system operators already have it. What is a challenge now for the scientific community is to go to the stochastic part. So how you do stochastic optimization with this. There is three possibilities. I will go with more details on this. So the first one, I call it distribution of decision variables. Is what it's normal to find in the literature. You run an optimization problem for each scenario. In the end, you have a probability distribution for the decision variables and also for the output variables. However, the question is uh, if this is useful. It is not, because the only thing he's saying to an operator is that, look, I don't know which decisions you can take. You have this probability distribution. Choose yourself. So it's not what is is requested from them. So another possibility is to use a robust optimization. So you can take several scenarios, you run a single optimization problem, you get decision variables, output variables for the worst case. And that's a problem. Worst case means um, more cost. So bad for a business case with this. The third alternative, the most interesting one, is to use chance constraint optimization. So you accept with a certain probability that uh, not all the constraints of the problem are respected. Um, and you get the output that you actually need, which is a set of decisions and the probability distribution for those decisions. The problem is that this is complex from the mathematical point of view and very, very challenging from the computational point of view. And this is where uh, high performance computing can actually make the, the difference. Um, I will show you some results. We have published a paper where we use a robust OPF, so worst case analysis. So I will skip this slide. And the network was not very large. There were several scenarios that represent uncertainty of PV and, and wind. This was a test network, so quite small, very small compared to the real networks. And the results, you have costs and so on. What I want to highlight is that we invested a lot of mathematical um, algorithms to decrease the computational time. And the best we had for one day only, 16 hours. So 16 hours to give a solution to an operator is not acceptable. Even eight minutes for a deterministic solution is not acceptable. So what they want is something in less than one minute. Um, so the challenge is how, how can we actually decrease the time to something that is acceptable to him? Um, I don't have the answer, <laughs> so um, we are working in several approaches. I don't know which one is, is better. I will show some of the examples. Uh, but it's important, um, and we need to build a business case for this, because this means more cost to the operator. Uh, the question is not if they should have this, is how and they should use it, um, and what they should have. So there is value, but we need to show how to use it. Uh, an interesting approach, this was a paper published from Stanford uh, last year, if I'm not wrong. We use a lot on these algorithms, sparse matrix and linear algebra libraries. Um, they, what they made was to have a completely different approach to solve a convex, in that case, optimization problem, where they replaced the sparse matrix by computational graph using TensorFlow. It means they can even use a GPU, for example, to solve the problem. 
I don't know, this could be a solution to that problem. So to explore this new framework to solve the, the optimization problem, it might work or not. This, is, this was made for convex optimization problems. We have a non-convex one. Another solution, uh, more interesting, is to distribute the optimization, so to decompose the problem in sub-problems and solve them in parallel. So this was a paper uh, that I think was submitted, it's not yet published, but it's publicly available, where you see that this is a comparison between the centralized, the centralized means there is no parallelization, so it's a single optimization problem, with the distributed is where they decompose the optimization problem in multiple uh, problems. And you see that at the same point, you get a, a, a decrease, an improvement in terms of timing on computational time. This is quite interesting. It has a cost. It has a cost. The cost is that these algorithms were designed for convex optimization problems. So you don't have any guarantees that you actually reach the global optimum or if you are actually close to, the, to a local optimum. So they made an analysis on how much was the error um, of the final solution, knowing which was the optimal solution for that, for that problem. Anyway, it's a, it's a good direction. It can be run these algorithms, and it allows to run in the, in the cluster of computers. And, and it's, it's a very interesting uh, approach. However, uh, there is some competitors on this. So um, this is the smart grid reference architecture. This is the smart grid architecture in Portugal that was selected by the European Commission as a reference architecture in Europe. Um, so this is, is interesting because you have two, two important points. Um, these devices are distributed transformer controller. They are um, located on the median low voltage substation. A median low voltage substation is like the substation of your neighborhood. So it's very close to the homes. And they have uh, industrial computer there. So they have computational power. So you can actually do uh, distributed computing with this. And then each home, they will have home energy management system, which is also a computer, not so powerful, not so with the same power as the ones here, but they can also do some calculations or even use a cloud to do this, <coughs> these calculations. So this could be, this means that you could do all the calculations that you actually need locally, and then you just give to the to the central system what actually is, is important. So this could mean going in the, the trend could be uh, distributed computing and not a centralized uh, solution. Um, and this is, there is already some manufacturers now selling these devices and installing these in several countries. Um, this started in Portugal with a Portuguese company, but now companies like Schneider and, and um, and other s Spanish companies like Ziv, they are already selling these and installing these, for example, in Spain. Uh, another competitor, and this is quite recent, uh, you probably saw this, is there is a lot of news and uh, companies investing on this, is the blockchain. So this is a, a big shift in terms of energy <coughs> trading. Uh, it means that instead of paying your, your electricity, you consume to a retailing company through a bank, you do peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, like the Bitcoin uh, concept. So this means that if this, this is, uh, will be a fact or not in the future, it's unknown, but this is, if this is the future, this means that you can do local calculations and local computations on the peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, so being a little bit provocative again, this might mean that you can do everything locally with the small computers, and you don't need a big cluster of, of computers. Um, there is a lot of companies uh, investing on this. In Germany, in, in it's the leading country on, on this, this concept. To conclude, um, some final remarks. So it's necessary to foster new knowledge and paradigms on operational research. I mean, um, if, if we need to run a problem that takes 16 hours to run, to have an optimal solution, uh, that's one, one possibility. The other is to say, I have 30 minutes to run. Give me the best solution you can in 30 minutes. This, this is an alternative. It's not the best, but it's the best you can give me in the time I have available. So why not change this? And, and instead of going to the optimal, is to find the optimal in the, the constraint by the time I have available or by the computational resources I have available. Key performance indicator, indicators are, are actually missing. 
uh, in some of these, these problems. Distribu distributed optimization techniques are very valuable for machine learning, for optimization. Business cases are missing, so uh, I, during my, my work, I present this to the electrical utilities. Th their point is the business case. Give me the business case, and it's very difficult to give them the business case. Um, and it's missing uh, European projects. They have cost and benefit analysis, but in general, there's not time to actually build a business case. So you end with some assessment of benefits and costs, but it's not enough. High performance computing will be, in my opinion, very valuable to stochastic optimization methods. This will be the future with a lot of renewables we have. And also to handling large data streams. Uh, phase measurement units is one, one possibility and to extract also relevant information from the, from the data. So I conclude my, my presentation almost on time, so 55 minutes. <laughs>